the uh, owner uh, of the Olympia, Bruno Kokatrix, was a, a very um, known uh, figure in show business, and he wanted to put up a, a, a hot show with the hottest artists from France, from the States, and from England. So he took uh, Trini Lopez from uh, from America, who, was a, who had a huge hit at the time, worldwide, if I had a hammer. And uh, me, I was uh, at the beginning of my career and had uh, many, many hits. And I was the only girl singing rock and roll in those days. And, uh, and the Beatles, of course, who were the sensation already in England, but not in France so far. And so they were kind of a sensation. And people discovered them uh, at this concert in France. And that was prior their tour in America. I was the drummer with Trini Lopez. And uh, one of our venues that we were going to do was the Olympia Theater in Paris. And they said, you're going to share the bill with this little unknown group we'd never heard of in America called the Beatles. And then we had this terrific gal, Sylvie Vartan. She was on the bill with us. And uh, I got to tell you, the Beatles, I'd never heard of them, you know, because I was from the States. They had not been to the States yet. And they were young kids, as we were young kids. And uh, we just sort of hit it off and sort of became buddies. We were together day and night, practically. We hung out in the daytime together. Obviously, we played at night. We partied at night. And uh, we just sort of became a family. Well, I remember the show as uh, a very hot ticket. And so the Beatles came and they were like, a, a, you know, a, a wave that uh, came over from Paris. Opening night, uh, I watched their concert from the side of the stage, and I thought they were pretty good, you know. They were young kids. Uh, the music was pretty simple. Three chord, rock and roll, love me, I love you, simple stuff. I loved it. I thought they, they looked so uh, original and with their haircut, <laughs> but uh, they, were, they were kind of... Uh, looked outrageous for, for the time. We just had so much great fun together working the Olympia and the way the footage came about, I always took a little bit of home movie footage of where we were, what we were doing. So I had a friend of mine go up in the balcony and shoot a bunch of footage of Trini Lopez, Dave Shriver and myself during our part of the show. I went up in the balcony and shot a piece of Sylvie Vartan's part of the show and then uh, I decided I wanted to shoot the Beatles too because nobody had ever heard of them. I didn't know if we ever would in the States, even though they did go on to be some of the greatest geniuses of music, I think. So I went up in the balcony uh, on stage right, shot this footage of the Beatles, and uh, uh, I just was so in love with those guys. Not so much as musicians or as a group. I was in love with the guys. They were just the best guys. So I came down on the balcony, I ran over to the side of the stage, and I shot more footage at the side of the stage. And so this few minutes of footage I have at the Beatles on stage at the Olympia Theater, I think is the only footage of them on stage at the Olympia. The Olympia was packed and, uh, and uh, screaming audiences and, uh, you know, it was the, uh, the, um, the era was like that. It was volcanic and... Uh, and uh, loud, and uh, everything was new for everyone, for the kids, for us, for, uh, for the music. At that time, they were like, uh, you know, very outrageous, and uh, everybody was uh, saying, oh my God, their long hair is incredible, it's terrible, you know? <laughs> they were, looked like rebels. The show was great. When you saw the Beatles in a venue such as Shea Stadium, it was not the greatest experience in the world because you really couldn't hear what they were doing. But at the Olympia Theater, all of those shows were great because of great sound and an intimacy. Uh, uh, at the front, front of the stage, you were six feet from the front row. Wow, I thought they were hot. When we were closing at the Olympia, uh, the last night, we all went to dinner after the show, and they said, well, Day after tomorrow, we're leaving for New York to do a television show. I said, oh, really? That's great. You're going to America. Yeah, we're really excited. I said, well, do you know what show you're doing? He said, yeah, we're doing a show called The Ed Sullivan Show. 
I said, you're going to love that because it's probably the number one best variety show in America at the time. John looked over at me and he said, yeah, but, you know, we want to do something where we can be seen in California. I said, well, you'll be seen in California. He said, we'll be seen in California. I said, correct. It's a network show. It'll be seen all over the country. And he, he had a little problem with that because uh, the country of England is the size of our state of New Jersey, you know, or New York. And so uh, it was hard for him to understand that they'd do a show in New York and be seen in California. So they were pretty pumped up about that. 